A tremendous job three years at San Jose State. Got them into a national ranking and a bowl victory last year. Colorado hired him. And now the Buffaloes and an onside kick to start the game. But the ball took a big hop right into the midsection of Tyson Coleman for Oregon. Well, that is one way to try and steal a possession, Glenn. Love the thought. That's what you've got to do if you're Colorado. You come out, you get aggressive, you try to steal possessions, you try to... Do anything you can to get that mental edge early. Love the thought. They just didn't get the bounce in there. This goes to a theme we talked about last week as Marcus Mariota hands off on first down and Byron Marshall's piled up as Colorado defensed that on their right side well. Now Derek Webb showed up in the gap fast. Now Mariota throws on the run and it's dropped. Right through his hands, but Colorado's got exactly what they want to do. Get to third down third down Oregon three receivers to the right the wide side Mariota going to the field side now he's got a man breaking open but he overthrows Addison and that's hard because that side of the field Addison's turning back looking right into the sun Kenneth Qualley the DB came he slipped then tried to gain ground and by that time Mariota was scrambling your picture you turn back to your picture right you're looking square into the sun the 20 as we look at the e-shirts difference makers with the Colorado Buffs on offense. Yeah, Jack Harris left tackle. He's got to get movement. He's got to protect. Michael Adkins, running back, came on strong for them last week. He's a freshman who's got to make an impact. Now up front, you really look at all of the guys, but Kelly Ikipi and Lacombo as a linebacker, these guys win the line of scrimmage. I think the key to Oregon's success this year will rest squarely on that front seven, but more on the inside three. They win their territory. So Colorado operating first down goal with a big ball for Richardson. And how about that? Connor Wood connects with his big man for a huge first play. Richardson behind Terrence Mitchell. And Colorado took advantage there of having no son to deal with. Richardson had no problem looking back to catch the ball. Freshman running back Michael Atkins gets little, if nothing at all, and a flag on the play. Illegal formation, offense, five men in the backfield, number 77, five-yard penalty, Maine's first down. Correction, that penalty will be declined. Second down. We saw last week how in miserable weather in Eugene, Glenn Cal just completely melted down in the first quarter. Never gave themselves a chance. Colorado trying for a different story here as Wood hits Kyle Slate. We talked about this yesterday with Colorado's coordinator Brian Lindgren trying to get Richardson off the line. Oh, and that ball through the hands and in Here's where Oregon so impacts the opponent. You know that a kicking a field goal is not going to dent Oregon, so Colorado will go for it. Richardson at the bottom of your picture on fourth down. And a little out throw. They went to the short side of the field, away from Richardson, to Nelson Spruce. So now red zone for Colorado. They've not done well in red zone offense early in the year. Blitz coming. Unblocked man. Wood does a nice job. And Wood does a terrific job there as he avoided the unblocked rusher, Tony Washington. Jordan Webb, who started most of last year for the Buffs, is out with an injury, not dressed today. Michael Atkins, a freshman, what a big game in Corvallis last Saturday, is the running back behind Wood. Wood trying to get away again, and throws one back in the middle of the field, and he got away with a terrible throw. This is an example of a quarterback finding pressure. He didn't have to go anywhere. His offensive lineman did a great job of giving him a pocket. Look in front of him. There is no pressure, yet he moves, and he moves into it. He finds the pressure. This fourth down, a little different theme. Fourth and ten. Play the percentages the, the, yes. at some point. The field goal here becomes a smarter call. 33-yard kick. And it is good. So Colorado gets points. Great perimeter blocker, but also a wide receiver can make things happen. And how about Chidero Uzo Deribe? He's got to get some pressure on the quarterback. And Derek Webb already showed up the very first play of the game, running through the gap and turning the running back back into the pot. The very young Colorado defense for the most part. Those are two veteran stalwarts who've been through a lot of well, a lot of experiences here at Boulder. 
Hasn't all been great for them as Byron Marshall. And that's an understatement, I guess you could say. Byron Marshall on the carry. But I'll say one thing for Colorado. We had a chance to talk to their senior Derek Webb yesterday. Mariota, it's Johnny Munt, the freshman tight end playing in the place of Lyurla today. Colorado Glenn came right out and said, this is the key for us on defense right now. Experienced guys, young guys, whatever, get in the right position. Got to have your alignment. Got to know your assignment. Oh, Mariota threw a ball that should have been picked to Derek Webb. Mariota, this would have been his first interception in a long while. And there, you know, it's it's a cliche, but there is a reason defenders is, are defenders. Yeah. Wow. Derek Webb, and we're talking about one of the challenges. Mariano gives it off there. A nice play by the other stalwart. Yuzo Deribe on that defensive so free goes to college football expecting that kind of change. And it's so hard on your football development. Guys who've been here that were recruited by Dan Hawkins, played for John Embry, and now for McIntyre. Catch by Addison, Oregon first down, Mariota with a big post to Huck. And Oregon's inside the five. And that's a play we saw Oregon try to throw a lot last week in the horrible weather. Mariota perfect here, Glenn. Yeah, he's got an inside receiver, safety steps up on the fake. There's no safety inside when he runs that seam. It's an easy throw for Mariota. And Oregon banging it down there to the two-yard line goes Marshall. Just looks like two. Well, Mariota faked out Webb. Now Dillon, the freshman, forces a pass, and it's almost caught and nearly acrobatic. Did Grabbed by Addison on the far side. It wouldn't have counted the official threw his hat. And you'll take a look. He went out of bounds and came back in. Watch the official's hat right on the ground, right at the feet of Crawley. So almost an acrobatic catch would have been beautiful, but it wouldn't have counted. Oh, did Mariota put a move on Webb in the open field there? That's breaking Ooh. somebody's ankle. Wow. Right there now. Well, we'll take a look at that one again when we get a chance. Third down. Marshall inside, no. And now they will run it for two on a unique play and easily barrel it in. Mariota runs the read option on the back side as good as anybody. Everybody bites. He pulls it in and they've got an early 8-3 lead over the box. Got a kick off here, Ryan Severson deep for Colorado. Go down that, and here's another part. This becomes custom for Oregon. Oh, this is just unique yeah, two-point play. Right here is your guy Farrell Brown in the backfield. Now they know they've got numbers and angles. It's not just numbers. They get a, an ace block, which is a triple team to a backer that springs him right through a gap and in. Well designed. Drew Howell, the long snapper, just shovels the ball laterally. You get a chance against Oregon. You must score touchdowns. Not Ooh, Wood took a big hit as he got right to the sideline. That's why I liked early. They were trying to go over the middle of the field. And Colorado on that big pass play to Richardson had a red zone opportunity. Did not score a touchdown out of it. Reverse. Atkins hands it off. Richardson wants to throw it. And Colorado. D.D. Goodson. Look at him go. He is gone. 75 yards, what speed from Goodson. And it comes from Paul Richardson. The first throw of Richardson's career has a 75 yard lottery ticket. Let's go back to the touchdown and, and the way it was designed. I want you to pay attention to these two defenders who will bite up on all the play action. And then this route over the top to drag a defender out so that the man who comes off Goodson is wide open. Because of the play action to get the safeties out and then that dragging route to get the other defender away, it opened right up. And that's a great blocking downfield. Mike Nelson Spruce was involved there, helping secure that last block to help Goodson get home with it. Mariota fires to Addison. And Addison uses his 
moves and speed to make a first down play out of to have two big ones already. Marshall, big hole. And Marshall into the secondary before Jared Bell right, drops him. Right there is a difference between Oregon of last year and Oregon this year. Byron Marshall looked for contact once he was he knew that people had angles. He didn't run from it. He didn't try to get to the outside. He went right to it. Last year, the year before, guys ran away, and that's how teams were able to beat them. 17-yard run. Flag down. Looked like some motion on Oregon there. Pass into that sudden field again intended for Farrell Brown. Illegal motion. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Bates first down. That was Addison, the wide receiver. In a much different weather. Perfect weather today. It's altitude. Marshall on the carry. Helfrich knows altitude well. He was an offensive coordinator here for three years. When Dan Hawkins was the head coach. Chip Kelly is the one who brought him from Boulder to Eugene. has done a tremendous job when he's kept the ball early in the season. He gets into the second level there before Woodson Greer drops it. And, and credit Woodson Greer. He doesn't bite on the play away. So he's there to force Mariota back into all the help. So here's again Oregon into a third down. They had a rare third down touchdown on the last drive. No, third down here, and it's swallowed up. That's freshman linebacker Addison Gillum. That's what they have to do against the double teams and the zone blocking. They've got to win at the LOS. And Colorado on fourth, or excuse me, Oregon on fourth. And Mariota threw it up there, hoping Farrell Brown could make a play. Jared Bell deflects it. And taking chances, and now they just stole a possession from Oregon. Out of a pistol, Wood lines up, fires for Richardson. And almost Christian Powell now the back. He was the lead back most of last year. Colorado told us they wanted to try to get him into more fullback. During the prior play, the clock did not start. Timer, please reset the game clock to seven minutes and three seconds. In space with Paul Richardson or in space with an option route from your back. Richardson up top against Troy Hill. Ah, but Oregon collapses the line. And this time, Wood does not get away with a bad decision. Terrence Mitchell with the interception, but that's pure Oregon. They collapsed the pocket. They brought more than Colorado could block. They forced the running back, Tony Jones, to decide. And once the ball comes out, that's why the, the DBs at, at Oregon are so good. Their, their defense allows them to be aggressive. They can either get at the line and shake people up, or they can take chances. Second interception. Or Terrence Mitchell. Byron Marshall trying to bounce, and Oregon doesn't let him escape. Strung it out nicely. And freshman Gillum again was leading the surge. With Oregon, you have to leverage each edge so that you keep guys from bouncing wider. Second and ten. Mariota has one knocked down at the line. That was Justin Solis. Got his hands up, knocked this ball down. See, they try to cut him. He's there. Oh, I take that back. That was a nice job by Nate Monsu. Getting his hands on him. Mariota, late pitch to Huff. So using Josh Huff there on the option. They, cut, they keep piling it on you. Running straight ahead, Marshall. And, and Glenn, that's a great point you raised because, look, this is a team that's playing without two premier offensive players today, DeAnthony Thomas and Colt Lyoro. And Colt Lyoro is one of the better tight ends around. And you don't sense, yes, they miss them, but they're not really handicapped. No, and, and what they do, you know, I, I talk about simplicity with them because they have a couple of base concepts. But they're as good as anybody at having enough options to Colorado. build upon all those concepts. And they do that very well. All right, so Colorado just took a timeout on defense. It's a 30-second charge. I don't know if to the last play. To be in the game after five interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas Tyner. Ah, oh, Thomas Tyner runs it. And, well, just when you thought he was gone, a nice trip at the last second by Chidobe Awuze. Off he goes. 
Man air number two. They've had six red zone trips this year, Colorado, and only one touchdown. Oregon here, you think this is almost a slam dunk. And they do score. They're two for two. Now Oregon brings their alignment in place. Matt Wogan. Another freshman. Got more of the kicking as the game went on last week at Eugene. And Logan boots through the extra point. Here we go. Hey, give it to your horse. You pull your backside guard around and, and, and get those three yards easy. And that's what their offensive line does. Now, the interception, at least you see the pressure in the face. You can't throw this back football. If you're going to throw it, it's got to be out of bounds or in the ground. We think a ton of kick returns in this day. Well, we're going to have one here. Higher kick. Severson's bringing this out. Severson's running with it. Oh, and a real big trip up by Troy Hill. Ryan Severson with almost. Still a good return, but almost a big one. So now Colorado returned to the guy they told us yesterday they think the downhill runner is Christian Powell. Oh, nice hole. Slide two tight ends that way, too. And Powell runs it. And the end results a 12 yard gain. There he is again. The same same scheme. Crayola was improved so much they're going back and forth. More Mitchell. Would get hit. That's a tough pickup for, the, for an offensive line. Long third down, Powell gets only a couple. You know, if, you, if you put it into the end zone, you're, you're only going to get 22 yards of offense or defense out of it. That's their second charge time. So you, you start, you start. You snap it deep. He runs up and rugby's the ball. Oh, and Addison gets hammered. So an unfortunate penalty there by Severson of Colorado. Kick On the kicking team, number 30. 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah. And see, he's going to get a little shove here, but he's looking back for the ball rather than watching. He th I think he's assuming this ball is going over the head of the of the receiver. So the line, the drive start for Oregon, the 25-yard line. It's a 17-yard difference. Mario going to go for the big one. And he's got Addison, and he is gone. 75 yards. Small element there, though. The sun has dipped just enough that that wasn't as tough a catch either as the one we saw great earlier quarter. in the quarter. This is a great, I mean, this is a gut shot, Glenn, after the punt and the penalty. One, one first play, big ball. And, and the offensive line's pass ball, but that action is still there. And if you fake a hitch, you do anything, you can get behind the defense. And that's what happens in this instance. Well, Addison did this twice last week on punts against Cal, and we laughed at the time. This was 67 on the official stat sheet, but let's actually clock how far he runs. Farther than I will ever run. <laughs> I mean, he's all yes. he's over there and back and over back here and then down the yeah. sideline, and then he starts making people miss, and where's he go? He uses the best angle, but it's the longest angle to get all the way over there to pick up a block to get to the end zone. Look at that. 139.3 yards. No, true, no truer statement has Glenn Parker ever made. <laughs> and let's find out. Oh, Touchback kick. Over 640 passing yards in the first half of that game. In the first half. As Wood runs to the middle. Stands up to take a hit. Oh, Terrence Mitchell jumps it. Terrence Mitchell saw that. Completely jumped. They can be aggressive on the corners because of their defense and because their offense scores. Terrence Mitchell saw it coming, defeated the block of Goodson in front of him, and gets over there to lay out and make a nice play on this ball. That's just that's beautiful defense. So Mariano is going to go for six more. And just. An end zone right, he's right back to the line. So that Oregon runs so quickly. And Gillum saves there on the tackle of Byron Marshall. Mariano just flat footed. 
too easy. If there's no pressure, you can really do it if you got guys wide open. You look at that, zero pressure on him, and he easily finds Keenan low in the back of the end zone. So Marcus Mariota keeps the streak going. He's played 18 games as a college quarterback, throwing a touchdown pass in each. A lot of guys for the Ducks have scored touchdowns this year. Take a look at this carousel of talent that rolls around. And, and not always the big names you think of. Guys that are really talented that show up, get a chance, get themselves a touchdown. It's a lot of guys. We had even uh, during pregame, Severson. Couple miss gets it just across. This is the 12th possession of this quarter. <laughs> that's that's unheard of. Well, Colorado coming right back. I mean, this is one haymaker after another. His inside arm, his right arm, is being dragged to his body because the DB is beat. He reaches out with one hand and grabs that thing. This is that is a phenomenal After catch. Number 14 on the defense. That penalty will be declined. Paul Jordan Richardson first down. Missed all of last year. But I'll tell you what, that's as good a catch you're ever going to see. Absolutely. That's as good as you're going to see. Two running backs in Powell now in as a fullback blocker, and Wood throws a nice ball to Nelson Spruce. And this is all of it. Now Connor Woods made some something went wrong. But the Bucs will have a chance. I do this for my school, for my teammates, for myself. I push for excellence in everything I do. That's what makes a winner. That's what makes a duck. The coach Mack you see on the field is not Mike McIntyre. It's the great Bill McCartney being on at halftime, heading into the College Football Hall of Fame. Atkins, nice reverse. And Atkins takes it inside the tent. Stood up. Good tackle there by Malone of Oregon. Well, another play. Boy, Powell got stopped again. Those two uh, having to replace NFL guys now, and they've done well for Oregon. Wood extending, extending, and then out of time. So you got to win your battles in the red zone and right, and right now the Bucs just aren't going to the University of Wisconsin's Badgers can grab another victory for the Big Ten. 1953's Rose Bowl game is ready to begin. During a grueling first half, it was clear Wisconsin had met their match. We've seen one of the greatest defensive battles possibly ever waged in gridiron history. And in the second half, USC seized on a rare scoring opportunity. Well, Carmichael, the target in the end zone, complete for the touchdown. While the Badgers never could. And the Pac-12 reclaimed Rose Bowl superiority. The Trojans of Southern California capture the West Coast's first Rose Bowl victory since 1945. Well, that ball needs to be covered. And, oh, wow. And Oregon was just not urgent enough getting to that ball. And, and Colorado had a couple guys that looked like they were on it, but it might have slipped out. This, uh, there's a battle going on under there now. Yeah, this but, is the pain. <laughs> Tell you what. Oh, and Oregon somehow, well, more accurately, somehow Colorado didn't get that ball. And, and, and you watch this. Two Colorado players are right on it. It hits into their stomachs right there and right there, and somehow they don't get it. Now, in here now, there's they're grabbing. There's maybe a little pinching, and there's some things happening trying to get guys to loosen up on that ball. Colorado almost stole one there. Instead, Oregon has its worst drive start of the first half. Colorado stacks it up for a short game. Very sad to look at this. You get it for me to come here, so I really appreciate it. You won the Heisman Trophy here, so a lot of memories. A lot of Colorado fans love you, and you're revered here. How emotional is it for you to be back here? Uh, it's real emotional, man. We've a lot of great memories. It's, it's strange how time flies so, so fast, but uh, it's great coming back with great city. A bunch of my old teammates, you know, come back here to see the flat irons. It's just very special. All right, thanks for your time. Best of luck to you. Let's send it back to Ted and Glenn. Well, I want to follow up on that in a moment, but first we had a big play there. Uzo Deribe blew up that run play, a long third down, and Mariota's sacked. So the Colorado defense has its best stand. Addison Gillum. <laughs> I never heard that story. 
breaking news on the Pac-12 network. I like it. Actually, a tremendous facility. I was really impressed with what Colorado offers. Well, this has been amazing in this first half. Open men down the field, and Colorado strikes again. Speed of Richardson. Powell runs it down inside the 15. So let me just finish real quickly and say, see you. Great department here. I'm very impressed with the facilities they offer their students to learn the television business, the film business. And I'm really impressed watching see what a different team, Glenn. We saw them a couple times last year without. What a different team with Paul Richardson. Yeah, just a different vibe on this offense. Michael Atkins and Christian Powell. Two backs in. Goodson with a little bit of a fly motion, but Oregon doesn't get fooled. And Ekpre Olamu is there to bust it. A 31-yard try by Oliver. He does get the points. Oh, that short kick this time. Creative plays by Colorado to eke out. Stay in the game. Right at the snap, false start, 71, offense. Five-yard penalty, makes first down. Marshall. Two big bodies out there pulling for him, and Marshall does a nice job. That's a lot of mass against a little bit of mass. And that's the dimension that Mariota continues to impress with. So he did about a 30-yard sprint there and comes right back to call the next play. And it's a good one. And Marshall runs it, and Marshall... Gains 16 and takes it to the Colorado 34. Nice job of cutting back, letting things happen. Johnny Munt tied in. Really good block in the hole there. Well, a quick ball to Addison. He made two miss and actually gets a few yards. And I think they're going to look at this, see if his knee was down. I think they're going to see if, if he wasn't the there. play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a backward pass. So they rule it a backwards pass. Which now doesn't matter, right? Right. What's the point? The point is you're right. It's just need to. Backwards the pass. The ball hit the ground. Okay, that was why it's a backwards That's pass. That's why. It's a backwards pass. Okay. So therefore, but it, I, it, it's hard to tell. We, it, it looks like it was thrown right down the line at the line. So, so a lateral or a backwards pass meant he could pick that ball up and rub it. There you go forward pass but here we go that foot's on the line and it comes forward that's a forward pass after further review the pass was forward and incomplete therefore it'll be second down at the 34 yard line timer please reset the game clock to eight minutes and 52 seconds this offense at this tempo when you're putting right and that's the key when you're taking those long runs Good wrap up there. Well, that's it creates a difference in who it covers him, and then he runs that little swing. Derek, Derek Webb, great job of playing that ball. And a nice tackle. Of course, of course Colorado, one hand signal for defense so they can line up fast. Marshall, all oh, Marshall, a terrific bounce. You have to know exactly which gap is yours, and then when there's an insertion of a fullback, or a lead back or a tight end, how that changes which gap is yours again. All right, I was looking for the post, it wasn't there. And then a shovel, and Marshall will take it inside the 10. And get rid of the ball. Great job by Mario. And now on first and goal, Marshall is stacked. Our zone scheme blocking on the offensive line, which is a lot of times a two on one situation can really get to you and start grinding you down. Looking for Tyner in the right flat, not there, to the middle, back, batted at the last minute. Getting the signals from the side. Just a quick toss, Tyner's speed. No, oh, and Gillum has enough speed. Well, a lot of noise at Folsom Field.
the back. Play clock running low. And it's Tyner who takes it in. That was Mariota again. Well, Mariota runs for a second of the first half. It all comes from the same action. If you put it into every play, people respect. It's in, it's out. It fools everybody. Mariota with another score. Ducks up big. Matt Wogan kicking off for Oregon. Severson coming out for Colorado. Had a couple of lanes on kick returns. Take a look at Oregon scoring. I mean, game by game. That's a lot of points. I, I guess if you're, you know, if you're Colorado, the good news is it's trending downward. But uh, it is not quite halftime. So Oregon's putting a lot of points up. And Tennessee right there gave up 59 points. They're locked in a battle right now with number six, Georgia, in overview. And SEC, that game was thought to be kind of like this game. Pretty one-sided. But it's so short, it's tight, it's, it's firm. With all the rain and snow, yeah. you would think it would be soft. It is not. Heard Oregon one bit is no, not they're not gonna slow them down. Oregon got caught with yeah. too many men on the field now, but now blowing the whistle tells us maybe Colorado substituted and didn't give them time. Let's find out. Substitution infraction defense number 66, five yard penalty, makes first down. Well, Woods got Richardson again. Richardson does a stutter and he's gone. Mitchell likes to be physical, get his hands on guys. Paul Richardson was out of there, man, and the safety cannot get over the top fast enough. That's Avery Patterson getting over. Oh, Powell broke the first hit there. Powell, the running back for Connor Wood. And another ball to Richardson. This one he couldn't get down the field on that sideline. Let's that one hit, and it will be down inside the 10. That helps UCLA. They'll move possibly into the top 10. Mariona, good strong throw on the run there. Hits Anderson. And just received work. Georgia hung on in overtime to win their game against Tennessee. Thomas Tyner. We talked about Byron Marshall running at contact. Tyner's not afraid of it either. A little different than the guys they've had in the past. Josh Huff out across the 45, so Oregon quickly. You, know, you talk about last week we were we were discussing, Ted, one receiver's touchdown is every receiver's touchdown, the way they block for each other. a little bit of a stop back shoulder throw to Keenan Lowe. Both teams have found weaknesses out there. Of course, Oregon, you're used to it, but Cal trying so many different things, putting Oregon on edge. And who's a Deribe? He just blocked high school. Right. A long third, screen to Tyner, middle of the field, speed, and first down Oregon. A little screen. And what I like, Tyner, north and south. He's not looking to get to an angle or an edge. He's north and south, get to the sticks. Up on that catch. Turns, takes it right at Crawley. That time, Hawkins was the route back under that allowed Huck to come open outside. Hawkins in the slot now. The 10 down to what the uh, the eight yard line, and here's Oregon in the red zone. Marshall inside the five, timeout Oregon, and this is about the only way you get a defensive break. Oregon calls a timeout. Marcus Mariota having a game, you know, pulling that ball, getting himself that touchdown. What, it's just putting the ball out there. Now, this one's in the sun. It's a nice grab by Braylon Addison, but it's got to be on target. Marcus Mariota again with another throw. Beautifully done. Had a lot of time, and then this time, take it back, get it done. He's accounted for a lot of offense. He's been good with his eyes. And, and going back, Ted, when you talk about what their offense can do, they grind you because they come after you so hard and relentlessly with that offensive line. But everything looks the same. They block them all differently. 
but it all looks the same. You get caught with your eyes out of place, you give up a big play. doesn't have to stretch with this ball. It's just an inside slant. This ball's put right on his body. Six touchdowns. the creek. Not far from the campus here. I thought it interesting. Both DeMarcus Webb. All right. The Boulder has rebounded. Powell on the carry. And Boulder very firmly wants it to be known. They're open for business. now to say, okay, well, that's, that's enough of the half. The Buffs will get the ball to start the second. Colorado at 318 yards, 8.4 per play, but Oregon six touchdowns. Let's hear from Mark Helfrich now with Drea. Thanks, Ted. Coach, even with DeAnthony Thomas out, still speed, relentlessness, and a lot of determination out there on offense, but how can you limit the penalties moving forward in this game? Well, that's not our biggest problem. We, we're just not playing very well. I mean, I think the only thing we're probably happy with is the scoreboard, which is a, a good good thing to be happy with. But, you know, we're just not playing our, our standard right now, our style, and, and we need to fix that. Colorado came into this game with a lot of emotion and a lot of confidence. What's most key as far as keeping the pressure on them on both sides of the ball in the second half? Just that and then doing our job. You know, we're, we're peaking in the backfield on play action, double moves, and, and, and they've, made some, they've made some big plays. But we've done a good, a decent job of holding the field goals in those situations. and. and you know, trading sense for threes is okay, but we'd like to be 7-0. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Best of luck in the